All right, disclaimer. This is a personal YouTube channel. Any views or opinions represented in this YouTube channel are personal and solely belong to me as the owner and do not represent those people, organizations, or institutions that I or may not be associated with in professional or personal capacity unless explicitly stated. Any views or opinions are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, or any individual. Um, on this graph, um, um, let me um, show you um, the nature of environmental impact. Let us say this is the this area is the um, environmental parameter. Um, this should be on horizontal, not like this. Um, anyway, uh, let us say that this is environmental parameter and this is time. Let us say that um, through time, this is the this is your environmental impact. This from this point to this point, and then your project initiated. This is your project initiation. So um, um, the environmental impact is being quantified this way. If uh, through time, um, let us say through time when the project initiated, with the project, the environmental um, impact increased. But without your project initiated, without your project, actually the environmental impact actually decreases through time. In which because of that, we need the EIA study for us to quantify as to what will be the adverse effects of your project with the project and without the project. And at least um, if, as we all know, as I have been telling um, everyone earlier that as we all know, in every development project, there is always an effect. But even if, let us say, this is your project, uh, the environmental impact actually increase when your project initiated, um, it does not mean that it will be not accepted, it will not be issued with CC. But um, you will, um, um, but um, therefore, um, your mitigating factors or mitigating and monitoring activities will compensate to that. So even if there is quite uh, an effect to the environment with your project, there are still ways um, that you can overcome or you can um, compensate those environmental impacts in which with your mitigating um, and monitoring um, design. That is how important your uh, mitigating and monitoring design is or that is how important your environmental management plan is. Um, it's with the um, mitigating the adverse impacts of your project. All right. Let's go now to um, um, categories of projects under the EAA system. So this is um, according to the DAO 0313, which I will be sharing that, uh, that document to you. But actually, you can download it online. But yeah, I will share it to you definitely. So we have three categories, category A, B, C, and D. The first category A is ECPs. Um, which, uh, which means as or which um, equates to environmental critical projects um, with, there's an H to that, excuse me, with significant potential to cause negative environmental impacts. Environmental critical projects. In which I will be giving um, what are this, uh, what are these projects that are under category A. Next is the category B. Projects that are not categorized as ECPs or environmental, environmentally critical projects, but, but, but uh, which may cause negative environmental impacts because they are located in an environmentally critical areas, ECAs. So category A, don't forget, it's ECPs that is being considered. Category B, it's ECAs or environmentally critical areas are being considered. On the category C, um, these are the projects intended to um, enhance environmental quality or address 
existing environmental pro- problems not falling category A and B. And of course, category D, um, projects unlikely to have adverse environmental impacts. So category A is environmental critical projects, category B is ECAs, environmental critical, critical areas, category C are projects that would um, enhance environmental quality or address environmental problems um, that are not under category A and B. And of course, again, D, um, that uh, will unlikely not have any adverse effects. So category A, B, and uh, category A and B definitely requires an ECC or environmental compliance certificate. Category C projects um, requires to submit project descriptions only. So again, category A and B would require ECC or environmental compliance certificate. This is a certificate that the DNR AMB will issue us. If it's a category C, since it is, um, it will enhance environmental quality and um, it's an environmental problem that is not under category A and B, then therefore the only um, requirement for an SCC, ECC will be issued is only project description. And of course, if it's category B, projects um, will only secure a certificate of non-coverage or C and C, certificate of non-coverage, in which EMB may require such project to provide environment additional um, environmental safeguards, whether the category C or um, category D. If EMB will issue you um, ECC with the category C and D, there is still a possibility that, that they might um, ask for an additional um, you know, few requirements for that. All right, let's um, go now to category A. Category A, uh, this is actually based on the proclamation 2146 in 1981. Um, proclaim uh, certain areas and certain projects as environmentally critical and within the scope of the EIS system. And this is actually uh, an, an, uh, this is based on the updated list of environmentally critical projects as of 2014. All right, these are the um, projects that are under category A. Heavy industries, an example of heavy industries is non-ferrous metal industries. Iron and steel mills, petroleum and petrochemical industries, and of course, the smelting plants. That Those are the projects that are under heavy industries. The second kind of um, environmentally critical project is the resource extractive industries. An example of this is major mining and quarrying projects definitely need an ECC, mining and quarrying. Of course, the forestry projects, if you have a forestry project, if, if you have a private land, let us say it's a private land, titled land, it's a forest area, and you want to convert it into um, a resort, forest resort, wow, if you want to convert it in a forest plantation, or um, not forest plantation, because that you can actually find a way to make it um, um, in, uh, increase the, the environmental quality, First projects like um, turn your forest into a um, poultry area or some sort. Yeah, as long as um, there is a forestry project or resource extractive industries, then that belongs to um, category A. And of course, the fishery projects. All of this are as long as um, it would uh, your kind of project will be a kind of project that you will be extracting resources then therefore you will definitely um, need to secure an ECC. All right, another type or another project, environmental criti- critically project that is under category A is the infrastructure project. Major roads and bridges, of course, you need an ECC for that. Major reclamation project, major power plants projects, and major dams. Definitely you will need an ECC for that. And of course, the fourth one, which is the golf courses. During my time, when I did my undergrad, golf courses is actually not part of the category A. But as of now, golf courses are no part of the um, category A. I would like to put a disclaimer. Um, apparently, I, was, I, I did not search in 
as to what is the updated list of the environmental critical projects as of 2021. But as far as I know, um, um, there was no update yet. But maybe um, there is already an update. If there's an update, then that would be good. But this um, environmentally critical environmentally critical projects are based on the um, updated um, list. Uh, this is based on the updated list um, last 2014. All right, let's go now to category B or the environmentally critical um, areas. Um, so these are um, considered as the critically um, critical areas. First is areas declared declared by the law as national parks, watershed reserves, wildlife preserve, and sanctuaries. Um, any national parks, any Reserve accessories belongs to category B. Also, um, areas set aside as aesthetic potential tourist spots. For example, um, Chocolate Hills is a uh, tourist spot and it has an aesthetic values. Therefore, if you are going to have a project, a project on that area, therefore you need to secure an ACC. Um, a ten, a potential tourist spots. Um, actually, we have few potential tourist spots here in Tacloban, um, like the Paraiso Mangrove, Mangrove, they call it Sanctuary, then, you know, that is considered as a Category B. Uh, uh, next, um, all right, next is the area, uh, areas which, which constitute the habitat of any endangered or threatened species of indigenous Philippine wildlife, both flora and fauna. Another uh, area that is under category B is um, area of unique history, archaeological, ge geological, or scientific interest. So any um, area, um, like for example, geologic, um, for example, in Pagudpod, they have a rock, Pagudpod rock formation. Of course, you cannot, you know, create a, you cannot create a project there or you can, sure, but of course, you need to secure an ECC first. In which, one thing that comes on my mind. Are you familiar with Manila de Torre? It's like the, the huge hotel building. Is it a hotel or a condominium? A condominium. Um, yeah. Ah, it's a condominium. All right. <laughs> yeah, actually, um, I, was, um, I was like so surprised when, um, when they started constructing that. I was like, what's on the news? I was like, how can they secure an ECC to that? Like, really? It's, it's like, you know, it's, you know, ang pamban, as what they call it, they call it as the Pambansang Photobomber ni Jose Rizal. Um, I have no idea as to, it was actually an issue. It was a huge issue. I was like a PhD student that time. And, um, um, actually was being noisy to that issue as to how come they were able to secure an ECC. But then again, um, I hate to say it, but I, I, and just based on my opinion, personal opinion, there is a possibility that, you know, politics played with that. Because, you know, you cannot easily get an ECC for a condominium that is behind the statue of Rizal, which is, you know, in national, in, it's a national park. It's, an, it's like, it's a national monument, I should say, and you know, you, yeah, it was a huge issue. But definitely, those kind of area would really require you an ECC. And then, of course, areas with um, traditionally occupied or cultural communities or tribes. So, if there is an indigenous people that are living in a certain area where you are gonna be building your proposed project, therefore, you need an ECC for that. And next is uh, areas frequently visited or hard hit by natural calamities. If you have a project, if you are building a 100-story condominium or 100-story building that lies in a fault line, therefore you need an ECC to that. But definitely, of course, if it's in a fault line, uh, I know for sure, um, anybody, even if you're not an engineer, of course you will think as to if it's worth enough to put a 100-story building on above the fault line so yeah natural communities uh, it actually not only in, in, uh, involves earthquakes but also um, typhoons and other natural calamities of course areas with critical slopes um, when we say critical slopes um, it is um, like if it's already 75 percent like 
it's so slow p 75% is so slow even 45% is so um so quite hard to um, hike on if it's a mountain and uh, therefore you know it's a critical slope so you have an ecc for that you need an ecc for that um areas classified as prime agricultural lands um, it's a fine agricultural land, and you are going to build a residential area for that. Of course, you need an ECC. Um, recharge areas of aquifers like swamps and wetlands. If you will be building and reclaiming that and put a residential area, then therefore you need an ECC with that because that is under environmental critical areas. Of course, water bodies, we also, uh, you also need to secure an ECC. Mangrove areas, definitely. And of course, coral reefs, whatever it is excuse me, the kind of project that you, development project that you are proposing that is under the category B. Definitely, you will need to secure an ECC.